Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're going over how to play PlayStation 3 games on PC with our PCS3. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, our PCS3 is an open source and 100% free emulator. I'll leave a link to this page in the description below. Our PCS3 is available for both Windows and Linux. In this video, we're taking a look at the Windows version. To download it, just click on the Download for Windows button, and the download clocks in at 18.9 megabytes, which is actually pretty small in comparison with PS3 game file sizes. So just a friendly heads up here, if you want to play a bunch of PS3 games, just make sure you have enough hard drive space. Some of the games can be a number of gigabytes in size. Once the download has finished, the next step is to extract the file. You will need 7-zip to extract it, considering it's in a 7-zip format. If you don't have 7-Zip on your computer, I'll leave a link in the description below to a tutorial video that I've also done, and that might help you get started there. 7-Zip is a free program, it's easy to use, and I actually like it more than WinZip. And once you have 7-Zip ready to go and you're ready to extract the file, just make sure the downloaded file is in its own folder. So just create the folder wherever you want here, then right-click on the file, go to 7-Zip, and extract here, and this will dump all of the files into the folder. Next, we'll need to download the PS3 system software update. This is also 100% free, and I'll leave a link in the description below. To download this, just press on the Download PS3 Update button. When it finishes downloading, place it in the exact same folder where your RPCS3 stuff is. From here, you can go on ahead and open RPCS3. The very first time you open RPCS3, you will be greeted with this message here, so just make sure to read the Quick Start Guide and you can also click do not show again, then just go on ahead and press continue. When everything's up and open, you should be at a screen that looks something like this. The next step here is to install the firmware. So just go to file, install firmware, click it, and then click that PUP file that we just downloaded earlier. From here, click open. This process takes a bit of time, so just be patient. The next step here is to configure your controller, and it's a pretty easy process. There's a button right on the top that says pads. Go on ahead and click it, and it should bring up the gamepad settings. By default, it's set to keyboard as your primary controls, which probably isn't the best way to control PS3 games, so I do recommend changing this up. It's a pretty straightforward process. You go to the left-hand side at the top here, and then select whatever controller you have plugged in. So I have an 8-Bit Doe Pro 2 plugged in, and it registers as an X input controller. It mimics an Xbox 360 controller on my system. So here's the 8-Bit Doe Pro 2. I've switched it over to X input. As soon as I hit the triggers here, you can see the sliders moving over on the left-hand side, and you can also see the little blue dots on the analog sticks here moving when I move the controller, so I know everything is working fine. If you want to remap any controls, it's also pretty straightforward, and I actually kind of recommend doing it just to make sure your controller is mapped correctly. So all you have to do to remap the controls is just click the button you want to remap, hit the corresponding button on your controller, and you're pretty much good to go. When you're all done, just go on ahead and click save. Just something worth mentioning too, sometimes if you close RPS3 and open it back up, there's an update available. Just go on ahead and click yes to update it. The next step is to add your games. Whether you have one game or a bunch of games, it's relatively simple. Just make sure your games aren't zipped and make sure they're all in the same folder. So what I'm going to do is click file here. I'm going to click uh, add games. And from here, I'm going to select my games folder. So for the purposes of this video, I have one game and that's Tekken 6. From here, I can just open the game and play it if I want or I can change the settings and optimally configure everything. Now, if you're having an issue of RPCS3 not reading one of your games, it might not be compatible with the emulator. So there is a website here, I'll leave it in the description below, where you can check the compatibility list to see what games are compatible and what games aren't. This list is kept up to date, and if your game's not on here, hopefully sooner or later it shows up. Now, to optimally configure your game, there are two ways to do it, and I'm gonna show you both ways. So the first way is to go to the RPCS3 CS3 website, take a look here and see if the game has optimization settings. For example, if I go into Uncharted 3 here, if I scroll down the page just a little bit, I'll leave the link to everything in the description below too, but you can see the exact configuration that you should be using for optimal results. Now, not all games have information like this where you can just take it and plug it into the emulator to help get the best settings. For example, Tekken 6. As you can see, there's absolutely no information here for Tekken 6. So to make sure Tekken 6 is running optimally, it's just trial and error. 
And that's the second way to kind of optimize your games here is to play around with settings until they work for you. So to configure some settings here, go into configuration and click on CPU. And this brings up the entire configuration menu. If this is your first time running the game, I do recommend leaving everything at default and then seeing how it runs. From there, you can kind of see what works and what doesn't work. For the CPU page, I'm just going to leave everything as is. On the GPU side, this is where you can really change some things up. Make sure your graphics card is getting picked up by graphics device. Mine is, and that's a really good thing. The renderer is defaulted here to Vulkan. I could change it to OpenGL if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it on Vulkan because that's the default setting here and it does seem to work. The default resolution is set to 1280 by 720. Again, I'd recommend keeping this as is until you can verify your game is running correctly. And then go on ahead and increase it if you want. You can decrease this as well. If you want to decrease the resolution scale if things are going slow, you absolutely can, and that might help speed up your game. And then on the other hand, if you've got a pretty powerful PC, your game is running absolutely fine. You can bump this up a little bit if you want. For the audio settings, I recommend keeping everything at default. For I.O. here, again, I recommend keeping everything on default. For system, again, keep everything on default. The only other thing I recommend changing in this menu, well, not even recommend, you can just kind of change it if you want, is in the emulator settings menu. So you can change something like start games in full screen mode. You have some options here, but other than that, you don't really need to change anything up. Now, before starting your game, this step is optional, but highly useful and highly recommended, and it's to check for game patches. Sometimes there's some patches in here that really help out gameplay. So if you go into manage and then click game patches, there's a checkbox here, click only show owned games. And then from there, click download latest patches. So unfortunately for Tekken 6 here, there really isn't an available patch. And that's kind of a bad example, but at the same time, there are patches available. If you know what these patches are, then go on ahead and go to town here. If you don't know what any of this stuff is, I don't recommend enabling any of it. Just kind of exit out of this menu and then load up your game. Now, the first time booting the game, does take a little bit of time so be patient here it's got to kind of install the game and get things ready for you and just like that i've got tekken 6 up and running in the top right hand corner of the screen here is the frame rate so i can see it's kind of holding steady around 60 which is exactly what you want you don't want this dipping at all if it is dipping significantly for example if it was going from 60 down to 40 maybe 30 or 20 then I know I've got some sort of performance issue and I'll have to try to tweak my settings to get some more performance out. And that would be something like lowering the resolution, scaling, lowering the resolution, and praying for the best. Now, just a friendly reminder here, RPCS3 is still in early development. It still has a long way to go before it's fully compatible with every single game out there and before it runs really well on a lot of different machines. Right now, you still kind of need a powerful machine in order to emulate PS3 games. If you're struggling with PS2, if you're struggling with N64, chances are you probably won't have a good time with PS3. Now, with all of that being said, if you're looking to dump your own PS3 games, check the comment section below. Sometimes people post some very helpful links with some very useful information. Anyways, that is all I've got for today. I'm probably going to do a video at a later time with some more advanced options for RPCS3. Let me know your thoughts about RPCS3 in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.